Chag Sameach, everybody. Good morning. Happy Passover. Here we are again. It's yes. with Survivor Seder. How was your short week since Shabbat, uh, actually? We've only yeah, been, been a part of a few days. Um, most of my week has been in preparation of a virtual Seder, you know, which we've never done before. <laughs> and now we have. And we, as you said, we survived. And I, I think it was fun. I think it went well. Great. Great to see everybody's little faces. It was fun. It was yeah. a fun thing to do. It was a lot of uh, learning also to make mm -hmm. sure we had all the cameras. Ooh. Well, the camera. The camera. <laughs> In the right place. That I thought it was reassuring to, at least to me, to find that uh, I was still able to do kind of normal. Yes. For yeah. what at least um, it felt that uh, we were doing this together. Yeah. Uh, I. I watched the video after the fact, so I've been watching some of uh, your faces because we were concentrated on the Seder and uh, thanks to Dave and Chris who were yes. manning the, the Quite back literally. Uh, part of it. So, But here we are. We are on a Facebook Live and we're coming to you from um, uh, uh, Blue Fox which is here in Lenexa. Yes, thank you, we and appreciate it. <laughs> we have several uh, things we've been doing here, and I think we will continue uh, bringing to you uh, some of our services together. Now, we do have slightly uh, different service today. Now, if you have um, the flip book, or if you have our uh, regular um, prayer book, we will be uh, calling from uh, pages from the regular uh, Shabbat um, um, prayer book. Yep. It is Pesach, but I'll explain later uh, 
what, uh, what we need to do um, for that. And that'll be the numbers in brackets. If you've got the shorter Shabbat book at home, or if you've got the flip book, it'll be the numbers in brackets. If you've got the big book, there are no brackets, and it's just <laughs> the numbers. <laughs> so, um, uh, so if you can find now Shabbat morning service, Roman numeral number one, uh, we will begin there. If you're joining us and uh, find the things as comments and you like to say they are Chak Sameach, Happy Passover and Hello, please uh, do so. Also, this might be a good time for sharing uh, this video feed on your personal Facebook page. As always, we'll have someone monitoring the comments and try to answer your questions. We will begin together thanking God for having brought us to this very moment. We survive uh, another Seder in the best possible way. And oh, I dropped my bottle already. <laughs> it's live TV. Get out of the way <laughs> And uh, please join us. Mode Ani is on page 186. together on page 193, 193 in the square brackets. May the one whose spirit is with us in every righteous deed be with all who work for the good of humanity and bear the burdens of others and who give bread to the hungry and clothe the naked and take the friendless into their homes. May the work of their hands endure and may the seed they saw bring abundance harvest. We join together on page 196 for Elohai Neshama. Elohai Neshama page 198 we will recite together in Hebrew the blessings for our daily miracles which uh, keep increasing every single day that we spend time together with our families at home it's been a wonderful time to uh, get to know each other again <laughs> uh, yes <laughs> 
אשר נתן לסך ובינה, להכין בין יום ובין לילה. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, פוקח עבריים. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, מתיר אסונים. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, זוקף כפופים. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, רוקה הארץ על המים. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, המכין מצד הגבר. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, מלביש ערומים. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, הנותן ליהב כוח. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, המעביר שינה מעיניי ותמונה מאף אפיי. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, שעשני בצלם אלוהים. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, שעשני בן חורים. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, שעשני ישראל. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, עוזר ישראל בקבורה. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, עוטר ישראל בתפארה. On page 218, we continue with Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Koran Shama. We turn now to page 227 as we prepare for the recitation of the Shema together. We will recite the blessing that was very common uh, many, many centuries ago in the land of Israel. They introduced this blessing before the recitation of the Shema. And the blessing fell out of use over uh, a thousand years ago, but we like to reclaim it here as part of our liturgical heritage. And we recite it together at the top of page 227. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu, Melech Haolam, Asher Kitshanu Bemitzotav, Vetzivanu al Mitzvat Kriyat Shema, Lehamlicho Belevav Shalem, Uleyachdo Belev Tov. Praised are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot, commanding us how to recite the Shema, to declare wholeheartedly God's rule, to declare earnestly God is one, and to willingly worship God. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha בכל אבבך ובכל נפשך ובכל מאודיך והיו הדברים האלה 
אשר אנוכי מצווך היום הלבביך ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת בעם בשבתך בביתך ובלתך בדרך ובשוכך ובקומך וקשתום נאות על ידך והיו לתותפות בין עיניך וכתבת על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי ניתן קדושים לאלוהיכם אני אדוני אלוהיכם אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם לאלוהים אני אדוני אלוהיכם אדוני אלוהיכם אמת אמת On page 240, we will, in just a moment, sing together Mi Chamocha. But before that, on page 241, we'll read together in the middle of the page. In what is my lifespan? I am like a man gone out of Egypt. The Red Sea parts I cross on dry land. Two walls of water on my right and on my left. Pharaoh's army and his horsemen behind me. Before me the desert, perhaps the promised land too. This is my lifespan. Our service will continue in just a moment with Sur Israel, which then goes into the Amidah, the standing prayer. And it has become our tradition now because we've done this for almost a month, wow. <laughs> which is <Wow>. that, <laughs> which is that uh, we uh, begin it together with Adonai Sefatai, and then each of us prays it silently uh, at home in a different way. You may read the entire Amidah Uh, in a more traditional way, or you may kind of peruse through the entire section. Now here is where uh, the services uh, for Pesach would have been different than this. Um, I actually went back and looked at uh, both prayer books together, and everything that we've done so far uh, would have been also under uh, festival morning service number one with a different page. So if you're one of the lucky ones, who actually has the thick book. Uh, we didn't have the flip uh, book uh, for everybody, um, and uh, the Kindle version was more expensive to just get the, the one for the yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah. So for maybe just once uh, you will use it. So anyways, so, but if you have at home the really thick one, uh, uh, we uh, invite you, on, only on that one, uh, you can uh, see the beginning of the Amidah for festivals on page 468, all right? And that's only, there are no brackets there, it's just one page. But only if you have the very thick one, uh, Mishkan Tefillah at home. Um, I'm guessing that most of you won't, so I will, after the Amidah, after a silent uh, moment, I will share uh, one of the special uh, Pesach festival prayers that will be on those pages, um, and we'll cover that that way. So on page uh, 240, we begin with Tzur Israel, and then the Amidah begins on 242, and it will go through page 261. Tzur Israel, Israel, Go Adonai, Tzvaot 
שמו קדוש ישראל, ברוך אתה אדוני גאהל ועשיינו אדוני אלוהינו את ברכת מועדיך לחיים ולשלום, לשמחה ולששון, כאשר רצית ואמרת לברכנו, אלוהינו ולא יבותינו ואמותינו, קדשנו במצוותיך ותן חלקנו בתורתך, סבנו מטובך ושמחנו בשועתך, וטהר ליבנו לעובדך באמת. וינחילנו אדוני אלוהינו בשמחה ובששון מועדי קודשך, וישמחו בך ישראל מקדשי שמך. ברוך אתה אדוני, מקדש ישראל והזמנים. Bestow upon us the blessing of your holy festivals, and may we so celebrate them as to be worthy of your blessing. Our God and God of our ancestors, make us holy with your mitzvot and let your Torah be our way of life. May our rest on this day be pleasing to your sight. Satisfy us with your goodness, gladden us with your salvation, and purify our hearts to serve you in truth. You let your holy festivals remain our heritage and let us celebrate them with joy so that all Israel, hallowing your name, may have cause to rejoice. We praise you, Adonai, who sanctifies the house of Israel and the festivals. <laughs>
we move now into the service for the reading of the Torah, and we will do it with our, our scroll. We will do it from our um, chumash, our uh, book. Um, there is a link on the comments um, that will guide you to the Torah reading for this morning. Uh, if you click there, you may get to the URJ's main webpage, and it will show you the reading for uh, Rishon Shel Pesach, which is the first day of Pesach. As we prepare for words of Torah, we begin by singing together Al Shlosha Devarim, is on page 367. Al Shlosha The reading for the first uh, day of Pesach, Rishon Shel Pesach, is from the book of Shemot, Exodus, on chapter 12, beginning on verse 37 and through uh, verse 42. Uh, there's a section in the book um, of Exodus on chapter 13. We're not going to do that second reading. <laughs> We're going to do only uh, one today. Now, this is the text that we are all very familiar. Oh, I dropped my water. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put it right here. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to put it right here. I have a little table there. There you go. Now it's that was really smart. <laughs> That's very risky. <laughs> less risky. Um, uh, first of all, I think it's important to remember where we are in the book of Exodus. Chapter 12 is a very important chapter in the book of Exodus. As a matter of fact, um, uh, Rashi, the very famous 12th century, 11th century commentator in northern France, um, asks, why doesn't the Torah begin uh, with this chapter? Yeah. Because this chapter contains the first uh, mitzvah commandment that is addressed to the people as the people, which is the one about establishing the beginning of the uh, lunar year, the beginning of the first month of that, which is the month that we're in, Nisan. Because in the Torah, as you uh, may know, the first month of the calendar is this month, Nisan, uh, mostly because it's springtime and because Pesach uh, occurs on this particular month. Uh, the second thing to remember, so this is all happening still in Egypt, um, and this is how... I think I have to remind uh, everybody of how the rabbinic mind or the texts have looked at the chronology of Pesach itself. Because this will fit into the last day of Pesach when we get there. And the idea is that the first uh, Pesach occurred in Egypt, and that the rabbis called Pesach Nitzrayim, the Pesach from uh, Egypt which is different than the one that we celebrate in the subsequent years. Okay. So Pesach Mitzrayim um, has this uh, chronology. The night of, the first night, which is our night of the Seder, is the night where uh, the last plague was supposed to go by, 
and then the uh, blood was gonna put uh, before sunset, and then that would be it. But I know that we say that we celebrate in Pesach uh, the liberation from Egypt, but Pesach Mitzrayim does not happen. The liberation itself in Pesach Mitzrayim does not happen on the first night. Huh. All right. Because think a moment. They are in their yeah, houses yeah, yeah. Uh, trying to uh, um, uh, be safe from the plague, the last plague, the uh, um, killing of all the firstborns of Egypt. And so they are there. So they are not crossing the Red Sea yet. That happens according to the rabbis uh, on the last day of uh, Pesach, on Shavin Shel Pesach. And that's why the reading uh, will be the chanting of the Song of the Sea. So what are we doing in the week? We're moving along. So uh, uh, this week's, uh, the, I mean, the, the Torah portion for today, and we don't have services every day, but we will continue then to read every day. Okay. We'll have our service on Shabbat is this is um, the period in which they are moving from uh, Ramses to Sukkot. And that is, um, I had to look it up. Uh, uh, so my commentary says that uh, Sukkot, which has nothing to do with the Sukkah, all right, it's a place, is one uh, day, well, maybe it has, but not, yeah. with, not in this case, um, a one day's journey from the royal palace at Ramses. And this probably was the site known as uh, Jeku in Egyptian, the capital of the A provinces of the lower Egypt in the eastern part of the delta. The region is known to have served as pasture land for Semitic tribes and uh, was the Egyptian gate gateway to and from Asia. Uh, which is, you know, where the land of Israel is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, they are moving, and um, they're starting to leave uh, Egypt. But it's a very dangerous time, uh, because if you remember the story of the Exodus, uh, Pharaoh was not quite ever sure to let the Israelites leave. Right. I mean, he tried. <laughs> he took <laughs> ten times, and, and he still then decided to pursue the uh, Jews as we were leaving Egypt. So, but this text is very uh, important to us, the one that we read today, because it contains one of the central uh, celebrations or aspects of the holiday. And you will see it, I will read it in uh, Hebrew and in English, but I want to focus on this one in particular. And it says, they baked unleavened cakes of dough that they had taken out of Egypt, for it was not leavened since they had been driven out of Egypt and could not delay, nor had they prepared any provisions for themselves. Okay? So this is, if you recall reading the Haggadah last night, the reason given, and this is the verse quote, um, uh, 12, 39 as the reason for uh, eating matzah during Pesach. Huh. Oh, yes. But, but it's one of them. And this is when it gets really interesting. Um, <laughs> it's always more interesting <laughs> than it sounds. Uh, um, um, uh, so here are a few things. I mean, I have more questions than answers today because I think that um, many of us take for granted that we eat matzah on Pesach and don't think about it uh, uh, more than just that. Now, um, one thing to remember is that this kind of bread that is doesn't spend a lot of time, you know, rising, it's very common in uh, the area mm -hmm. where uh, yes. we're talking about. So you don't really have a lot of the really, uh, you know, fluffy kind of bread. And if you know, like I do a lot, of, not a lot, but I do a lot about medieval things. Bread in the Middle Ages is still not as fluffy and nice as we have it today. Well, not this week, I mean in general. <laughs> <laughs> that we find it at bakers, if they were open. <laughs> Uh, some bakers are open. <laughs> it's a very strange if week. If they were open and if we were eating it, it would be great. <laughs> this is one of those weeks that th nothing makes a lot of sense in that regard. 
Um, so um, I was actually reading a commentary about this, which it would take us in a slightly different direction, and I won't go too far that way, but um, the thing that is really um, in, in uh, play here is not yeast per se, because we do think about yeast as something that is forbidding in Pesach. However, um, in the Middle Ages and before that, yeast as a product did not exist. Okay. Um, as a separate thing for making bread. Uh, you probably heard about these um, sourdough starters, you know, they're becoming very popular. Yes, they create their they, own. Their own, right. And, and I have a good friend, Rabbi Bruce Pfeffer, who is an expert on all this, and he taught me about uh, this. He actually once tried me to bring some dough started in Jerusalem, and I wasn't sure how I could bring it into the country, so I didn't. But, but I learned about doing this. So what happens is that there are these spores of, of things flying in, every, in the air, mm -hmm. and every part of the world has its own sourdough starter. So you mix uh, some flour with water, and then the air itself helps you get that started. So what we're talking about for matzah is that we don't want that started to get to a point where it really grows. All right. So, and, so the, it's not that they were putting yeast in the bread and then uh, let it, they didn't have time to rise it. So it's not like making bread today and... So it just stopped it before the uh, magic happened. Correct, correct. So, um, and that is the hastening part. But the piece that uh, uh, strikes me the most is uh, this whole little text at the very end of the verse that says, Vegam Seida lo asu lahem. And the word Seida is translated here as uh, it had prepare, to prepare a provision for something, you know. Um, uh, they couldn't tarry in Egypt. I understand that piece, but they have uh, not prepared any provisions for themselves. And this is when it gets complicated. It's like, how long have they had to plan this? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, uh, this whole thing about uh, leaving, uh, uh, um, if we calculate, they really had at least two weeks to prepare for the exodus. Huh. Was it superstition? Like, if we pack, he's not going to let us go, so just nobody pack anything. <laughs> well, you know, again, here's, uh, it, it's open to interpretation. Uh, Rashi seems to suggest that um, um, they, they were actually uh, so confident that God will provide for everything that they didn't prepare anything. Ah. Now, this thing about being prepared for things that may happen really speaks to me and to us, I think, these yes. last few weeks. Yeah. You know, how prepared we were as a people, as a nation, for what we're facing now. And um, I don't know. As in we'll, not we'll very, find yeah. <laughs> we We'll find out. Uh, history will tell how prepared we were or not. Um, and I think we're judging uh, the Israelites a little bit on that as well. You know, were you prepared to leave? Uh, so that's, that's, does this suggest perhaps some kind of uh, lack of confidence God, that God would redeem them? And think about, you know, we all have doubts of how things will turn out. We, and this is about the pandemic, but it's also about anything in life. You know, we cannot predict the future. Right. So uh, we uh, may not have confidence and faith that things will turn out well, and so we may sometimes not want to prepare for the worst. And who can blame you yes. if you don't want to prepare for the worst? Um, another, and I like this interpretation better, that perhaps what we're facing here is um, slaves' uh, mentality of living, <coughs> excuse me, day to day and not preparing for the future. Oh, sure. And that kind of makes sense to yeah. me. I mean, as a slave, one of the things that you're not really master of, if I had to guess, and I've never been one, but is that uh, you really don't control time anymore. 
somebody controls it for you. So you work now, you stop here, you go here. You know, everything is so regulated that you don't really know what it means to plan for the future. Which, bringing us back to our preparedness, uh, we are not slaves. We should have known how to be prepared for this better as a people and as a nation. Mm -hmm. So perhaps there uh, we have no excuse not to be uh, prepared. Um, and Rashi, again, might be correct that uh, this testifies to uh, the fact that they had faith and willingness to march into the desert without having prepared food in advance, that things will turn out well. You know, I don't want us to operate that way. We yeah. need to stay home, wash our hands, and be careful, but... Perhaps a little more faith uh, may help us also at this time, knowing that we are marching into some kind of a desert of uncertainty and uh, do some things to stay safe, but also leave a little bit uh, to the fact that perhaps things will turn out better yeah. for well, us I all. I think that um, faith is more of a mental thing, right? Mm -hmm. Practically, actions, stay home, wash your hands. <laughs> but keep the faith, faith that we will be through this mm -hmm. soon mm -hmm. and that we will be uh, together again. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, the, the, the Israelites <clears throat> did live through a lot of plagues. Yeah. You know, we have one, they had ten, and Ooh. they were okay on all of them, but still seeing it uh, out there must have been frightening to them. So for them uh, to do a little preparation, but not a lot, uh, it's understandable. It's yeah. understandable. So here is our story of matzah. So matzah is sort of that bread of not being quite prepared. And maybe in, the li in light of this interpretation, matzah is the bread of faith, of belief that the future will be better. Oh, which I, I like kind of like it. I yeah. like it better than yeah. calling it the bread of affliction, which right. is what you usually see on that. <coughs> Excuse me. So our... Um, Oh, I just dropped my <laughs> microphone. Hold on a second, everybody. Ah, oh, live television or Facebook vision or whatever O vision that we're having. So here we are <laughs> back. So, um, again, it's become our tradition uh, to say an alternative. Uh, a blessing for the Torah is on page uh, 369. Uh, since we're doing an alternative type of service, we're doing an alternative blessing. So, uh, page uh, 369. Holy One of blessings, your presence fills creation. You have enlightened this path with the wisdom of Torah, giving it to the Jewish people in their particular way. Blessed are you, merciful one, who gives this Torah to the Jewish people. <clears throat> Shemot, uh, Exodus 12, beginning on uh, verse 37. Vahisu v'nei Yisrael miramses sukota Keshesh mehod elef ragli ragli Hakvarim levad mitahav, vegam eref rav ala itaham, vetson uvakahar mikne kaved mehor. Vayofu et abeit saek. Asher otsihu mi mitzrahim, ugod matzot kilo chametz, ki gorshuhu mi mitzrahim, velo ya halu le itmameha, vegam tseidaha lo asulahem, umoshav bene Israel. Asher yashavuhu ben Mitzrayim, Sheloshihim shanaha, Ve'arba mehot shanaha, 
ואהיה היא 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 מקץ שלושים שנה וארבע מאות שנה ואהיה היא 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 בעצם היום הזה יצאו כל צבלות אדוני מארץ מצרים ליל שימורים הוא לאדוני לעוד ציאן מארץ מצרים הוא הלילה הזה לאדוני שימורים לכל בני ישראל לדורותם The Israelites journeyed from Ramses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 men on foot aside from children. Moreover, a mixed multitude went up with them, and very much livestock, both flocks and herds. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough that they had taken out of Egypt, Egypt, for it was not leavened, since they had been driven out of Egypt and could not delay nor had they prepared any provisions for themselves. The length of time that the Israelites lived in Egypt was 430 years. At the end of the 430th year, to the very day, all the ranks of Adonai departed from the land of Egypt. That was for Adonai a night of vigil to bring them out of the land of Egypt. That same night is Adonai's one of vigil for all the children of Israel throughout the ages. And we recite together the blessing after the reading of the Torah. Holy One of Blessing, your presence fills creation. This Torah is a teaching of truth, whole and balanced, and from it comes eternal life for the people who embrace it. Blessed are you, merciful one, who gives this Torah to the Jewish people. And as we gather together on this morning of Pesach, we take a moment to offer a healing prayer. We have a list uh, that you can access through our e-news, which you received yesterday. And uh, you can also look at it on uh, Facebook uh, events. If you like to offer names, please look on your screen and find the spot that says comments. And please, uh, in that space, type the names uh, that you would like to share for the Misha Berach. Uh, please go ahead and type them. And as we think of those in need of healing, we want to also offer a prayer for those who take care of uh, all the ill around our city and our country and the world yeah. indeed. May the one who blessed and led our forebearers give countenance unto those who provide help for the ill and troubled among us. May they be filled with fortitude and courage, endowed with sympathy and compassion as they give strength to those at their side. May they fight against despair and continue to find within themselves the will to reach out to those in need. And in their love of others, may they feel the blessing of community and the blessing of renewed faith. <laughs>
conclude our Torah service by joining together on page 374. As we prepare for our moment of remembrance, I invite you to turn to page 592 as we offer this prayer meditation. When I die, give what's left of me away to children and all men that wait to die. And if you need to cry, cry for your brother walking the street beside you. And when you need me, put your arms around anyone and give them what you need to give me. I want to leave you something, something better than words or sounds. Look for me in the people I've known or loved. And if you cannot give me away, at least let me live in your eyes and not in your mind. You can love me best by letting hands touch hands by letting bodies touch bodies, and by letting go of children that need to be free. Love doesn't die, people do. So when all that's left of me is love, give me away. We now think of our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us, we are observing the Schloschim period for Richard Dick Fertig, grand uncle of Laura Bolter, and Virginia Esser, aunt of Glenn Esser. And on this day of Pesach, the first day, we mark the following yurt sites of members of our congregation. Joseph Abend, Irino Bellotti, Francis Butcher, Duana, Linville Drollis, Teresa Estrada, Meyer Fish, Dorothy Frank, Herb Eisenberg, Shirley Rabinowitz, Charles Rubens. Zichronam Livracha, may the memories be for a blessing. If you're offering, Kaddish and Biyom. So if you remember someone as well on uh, this day, please add their names to our comments. Uh. On page 598, we join together as we rise for Kaddish Yatom, the mourners Kaddish. It gadal veit kadash shemei rabba, be alema divra chirute ve amlich malchute, be chayechon uve mechon uve chaye de chol beit Israel, ba agalao vizman kari vimbu amen. Yehe shemei rabba mevarach lialam ulelame alemaya. It barach ve ishtabach ve it paar ve it romam ve it nase ve it adar ve it ale ve it halal shmei de kudusha brichu leela min kol birchata ve shirata tush bechata ve nechemata da amiram ve alema vimbu amen. 
יהא שלמה רבה מן שמיא, וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. We have some announcements uh, before we uh, part. Yay, announcements. <laughs> <laughs> Just a reminder that our <laughs> building is still closed and our entire staff can be reached by email, via email or uh, Facebook Messenger. We are here for you. If you need anything, please let us know. We are monitoring all our communications. Our next Facebook Live Shabbat service will be Friday. Tomorrow night. Oh, oh my gosh, tomorrow. I, yeah, right? Today is not Wednesday. No, it's already today, Thursday. It's already Thursday, tomorrow night. April 10th <laughs> at 6.30 p.m. If you like to join us for our Torah study, Sichat Shabbat uh, will take place on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on Zoom. Please leave your email in the comments if you like to be added to the distribution list uh, for next Shabbat class. Uh, we would like to thank our friends, our Blue Fox here, our studio Thanks, for hosting us. And to everyone who's joined us uh, from our area and from around the world. We are planning other ways to stay in touch uh, virtually uh, from today until tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so please stay tuned. Uh, finally, please check us out on Facebook, like our page, and leave us comments about this service and other virtual events. Have a Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach. Happy Passover, everybody. And uh, we join together in singing Avadim Ha'inu, which is on page 665. Avadim ha'inu, ha'inu, ata b'nechorim, b'nechorim. Avadim ha'inu, ata, ata, b'nechorim. Avadim ha'inu, ata, ata, b'nechorim, b'nechorim. Avadim ha'inu. Happy Passover. See you tomorrow.